What's up, YouTube? It's Carolina Calvin, and I know it's, I, I wanted to do this, uh, you know, talk about the crossover because I haven't talked about Flash, Arrow, you know, or anything that's been going on with the CW superhero shows. But I got I got my buddy Mitchell here, and we wanted to talk about the crossover, what we thought about it. Um, of course, Easter eggs. They love to throw Easter eggs in there, and I, I guess what we see going forward with you know these shows, specifically talking about Supergirl. Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow, which have you know some have improved, some have not been as good as you know as the past. But we're going to talk about all that mainly that crossover. Now, um, the crossover started Monday, which I disagree it was not a four part crossover. It was a three part crossover. Let's say uh, Mitchell called it a three part five minute crossover, where you know they show at the end. You know, of course, this will, will have spoilers, and you haven't seen it by now, and you probably don't care about seeing it at this point. Um, you know, at the end of the Supergirl episode, you see Barry Cisco come through the portal to what was her Earth? Doesn't matter. Um, you see him come to her her Earth, and they talk about uh, the alien invasion. And you know, skip ahead to Flash. You see that happen on um, Flash. Them do that, and that's when it really gets into the meat of the crossover uh, during the Flash episode. So I mean, I guess we can go by each episode. Um, I'm gonna take out Supergirl. That's kind of standalone. It's just a five minute. But what do you think about? I guess the Flash part of the crossover as we go through each, um, you know, Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow episode. I think the Flash episode was sort of like that, like the first time you saw the Avengers mm -hmm. in the Avengers movie. It was like, okay, all these guys and girls are gonna team up and we're gonna see them take on like these aliens so it was just kind of cool to see them all like team up train together like meet each other some of them for the first time supergirl for the first time um and the interaction between you know oliver and supergirl um and then like just sort of that thing i think flash for me was probably the weakest episode but it was mostly because it was trying to set up everything going forward mm -hmm. so I, I enjoyed it just from the aspect of kind of, you know, being a kid again and, oh, this is the first time I'm seeing all these um, guys team up and take on these bad guys. So I thought I thought it was a cool episode, but I thought it was probably the weakest of all of them. Yeah, in terms of uh, just them setting up who the, you know, the aliens were, they, they, they spoke about who, you know, the Dominators, that's the aliens that was invading. And even Supergirl knew about them from, I guess, uh, her pretty much her home planet so you know they gave a little bit of a uh, backstory for them but the main thing for this episode is just seeing interactions um diggle was hilarious <laughs> you know just him he, he he i guess he he was the most relatable relatable as a you know of course as a person with no powers and you know you seeing all these people you see him of course you seeing what barry can do seeing what cisco can do then you see uh you know of course uh People from Legends of Tomorrow coming out with a time ship. And you see Supergirl, uh, a woman from another Earth who can fly and shoot lasers out of her eyes, indestructible and whatever. And you know, he, he's definitely funny just because he mentions all of this where no one else does. You know, Oliver's pretty cool with and everybody else. You know, ah, it's just something I see every day. But I, I, I really liked um, Diggle. Throughout, you know, he, he surprisingly... Um, he he don't he you wouldn't think he was a comedic relief, but to me, just him being realistic with everything that was going on uh, was to me funny. I don't know, but um, he was he was by far the funniest part of yeah. like all these episodes, just because like you said, he's kind of that relatable guy. Yeah, I also noticed that there was a couple times where Joe West was kind of making the same sort of references. Yeah, you know, like. Oh, we don't have enough going on here in Central City, like th that sort of thing. Um, it would be funny, like next year or whenever they decide to do this again, if those two guys kind of had those moments together. Yeah, they, they you should. Know? They should like, have had them together like, you know, uh, a little bit more. Because you yeah. really, you really only saw Joe during the Flash episode. You didn't really see him during any of the other episodes. But um, I, I, I agree. I think. Um, it definitely wasn't the strongest one, but 
I you know I liked it just because you see the interactions with the different characters and a character like Oliver who yeah uh, guy who you know he doesn't have powers and you know he's very he, he's it's hard for him to trust people especially things he don't know and he's seeing someone like Supergirl as she kicks their ass in the training he fears her to you know to a degree because you're seeing what she can do they're being attacked by aliens she's an alien so. You can kind of see, you know, there was a, uh, you know, a distrust there, and you, and a, as the uh, crossover goes on with the other episodes, you can see that um, really start to manifest, and um, he, you know, his distrust of, you know, something new. It's the same way with Barry and his abilities and everything like that. But I, I do like the interactions. Um, I think just to talk about a Supergirl, definitely her character. I like her character much more now. Than anything that CBS put out in the se- very first hmm. season, it's definitely been better. Her show's been better. Everything that's been going on with her, um, they definitely went away with the. They, they went away from a lot of the crap that they were doing in the very first um, season of Supergirl. So I definitely liked um, all the interactions with the, you know the different characters, and obviously it, it was just a setup. So I, I thought they did. A, I thought they did a solid job of setting setting everything up, and this was more so about. The heroes that you know coming together than actually the aliens themselves. Yeah, well, you got to think about it. It's like it's like a movie, right? Yeah. It's like three. It's like a three part TV show, but it's it's supposed to be put together as a movie. So, yeah. for reference, if you think about the Avengers, what was the first you know hour uh, all, or like forty five minutes? You know, is meeting them, meeting each other. You know, get, having some jokes. You know, playing around a little bit, and then they get serious in the next couple of episodes. Um, but I thought that the MVP of this entire series was definitely Stephen Amell. Um, oh, yeah. I, I thought he blew it. Like especially in the Arrow episode, which we'll get to, he was fantastic there. But like just his interactions and Arrow being that grounded show that it is. Mm-hmm. Like like you said. Um, well, it, at least it used to be, but, you know, seasons three and four were kind of different. Yeah, we'll um, magic and stuff in there. Yeah, but him and, and Supergirl, they had some good interaction in that first episode. And kind of also because they want the Flash to be sort of that, sort of surpass Arrow and be the face of their TV shows. So they were trying to have the Flash be sort of the leader of the team. Even though Arrow was kind of more suited for that role, I thought that was he's, also kind of an interesting he still dynamic. He felt too. like the leader going out through the rest of his crossover. You know, he he was, should be. He, he still felt. He still felt like the lead. Like Barry didn't know what the hell he was doing in terms of just getting everybody coordinated and everything. It, the thing is, I like it and I don't like it because I feel like the Arrow character and Stephen Amell as an actor is suited better to be the leader. Yeah, but. Flash is also like uh, historically like he's not really a leader, but he's also a very smart guy. And sometimes they make him seem a little bit too dumb. You know, like he's he's a very smart character, Barry Allen, but yeah. and and like a, as a person. But I also feel like Stephen Amell is just better suited as that role, though. Yeah, usually, here's the thing, though. Usually, like actually, like because he's more of like a very book smart guy he's a very book smart guy yeah i would say a guy like stephen mills more like street smarts he's he has had all the experience you know because like, he as a matter of fact he explained it to him one of the episodes about you know uh this is to talk about before we actually do where you know what his you know what his father had did and what his father had to do and all the all the things he had to go through all the you know how he had to struggle on the island so i think it's more you know it was experience you know oliver has kind of like that street smart Barry necessarily didn't really have that. He has, you know, in terms of science, um, you know, book smarts, he has that. But it's just, uh, let's use for instance, don't want to go to Marvel, but a guy like, a guy like um, Captain America. Captain America, he, he's a great leader. Not the, he's not the smartest guy in terms of uh, science and all that. You'll go to someone like Bruce Banner, you'll go to someone like Tony Stark for something like that. But when it comes to getting people in the right position, um, knowing personalities, yeah, get, getting the right game plan for a fight, that's the guy you, you usually go to, and that's why you see in most cases, it's usually uh, Steve Rogers who is the guy who's the leader, who's the guy who's making all the battle plans and everything. And because they don't have Superman or Batman, yeah, you know, 
Arrow is Arrow is very similar to Batman in they in this try universe. Their best to make it. <laughs> they Which try I kind of like, but yeah, that's that. some people don't. But that's fine. But but guys like Deathstroke and all that they've been universal villains. They've been villains for everyone. So you know, people always draw that correlation between them and Batman. I, at this point, guy like Deathstroke, um, I, I guess you could say a racial ghoul, but Deathstroke has been a villain who he's. He's been a villain to just about everybody, Teen Titans, all that. Um, yeah. I, I do want to say, though, that scene that you talked about where Oliver's talking about his dad, you know, on the boat and everything. Mm-hmm. I thought that was probably the strongest scene of the first episode. Yeah, because Barry never knew. Matter of fact, was that the, didn't they come on the second episode? Was that the first? I think it was no, the I think it was the first, wasn't it? I believe I don't. I, I don't actually remember exactly. It's all part. blended together. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, no, right? It's like it's like a, to me like a movie. <laughs> it's considered like a short movie to me. Um, Easter eggs. The building they were in. What did that building look like? <laughs> it looked just yeah. like the uh, your Justice Society, Justice League from the yes, early. Yes, that that's that was an Easter egg. Early sure. comics. And it was just it was like it's just a random Star Labs building. But you look on the outside, like clearly. That's the Justice League, Justice Society, early comic books, early uh, anime stuff. And I, and, I, and I thought that was uh, really cool. Um, there's actually people that I've talked to that never that didn't notice it. Like, they make it blatantly obvious out of any Easter egg that you'll find. That's the most blatantly obvious Easter egg. Um, the, the one that I laughed the most about was probably where uh, Adam said that his cousin... Uh, look like Supergirl because he played Superman in Superman Returns. <laughs> yeah, they did do that. They're cle- yeah. clever. They're clever. Um, they actually <laughs> in the Legends Tomorrow episode they actually quote a song. Can you know what part I'm talking about? See if you can guess it. Oh, they, I, can, uh, I don't know if I can remember. They 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 quote a Sierra song, "One Two Step." Yes. Oh, go listen to okay. that song. Like, he's like they quoted that old ass song. Like this is random. It was when Cisco and it was a, uh, it was Cisco and Felicity. They just quoted a random song. That, those two are usually where you get a lot of the just random. Quotes. Yeah, Cisco and also um, the other guy on Arrow, just like they were just going at it with like these movie references. That, yeah, you, you definitely got a lot of that. But um, keep going. did you did, did you like Felicity? In this episode, eh. uh, nah, she was okay. I still, I still feel like she's holding back the show or the shows. Yeah, I, she, she wasn't. Uh, if she wasn't there, I wouldn't care. Let's just say it like that. If she wasn't there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. But um, you know, the whole Flash episode, of course, it was an introduction. As it went on to a little bit more of the meat. Um, of course, uh, the big thing with the episode, everyone got my, um, let me see, uh, some of the more powerful characters got mind control, Supergirl got mind control, um, Ray Palmer got mind control, the Firestorm got mind control, Sarah yep. got mind control, Thea got mind control, and I believe it was Diggle? Yeah. That was it? Oh, and, um... Rory, Firestorm, I mean, not Firestorm, um, Heat Wave. He got, he also got a uh, mind control, and that was mainly, um, you know, that was mainly outside of the explanation and, uh, uh, of course, the introduction of the Dominators and the character and you know the heroes. That's what mainly you know uh, happened in the episode. They were making battle plans. How do they fight the? How do they fight them? What do they? How do they find them? Of course, the president um, gets kidnapped and everything. And that turned out to be a trap. That's when the mind control thing comes into play. Mm-hmm. And um, it was funny because uh, Barry, because it, it, this is a matter of fact, you can also add in what will happen to Legend of Tomorrow because you know, mine's going at 110. Um, what Barry told him from the year was it 2040? Was it year 2040 or something like that? Something he, like that. Where yeah. he told him, um, you know, how he, the whole flashpoint, how he made different changes and everything. And everybody lost trust in him, you know, except, except Oliver. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. But they still found ways to tie the, what happened, um, they, they found a way to tie flashpoint and what they learned from Legends of Tomorrow all into that. 
and you know of course include Barry with that and pretty much outside of really I want to say Barry and Supergirl Supergirl didn't know what the hell was going on she said she was going to trust him regardless because he helped her, you know she he helped her out and everything so she trusted him and Oliver was for the most part the dude was like Yoda he he was <laughs> his dude was like Yoda. He was like That's why I him. liked him so much he in these episodes. Everyone, especially he was like, Man, you can't change he was pretty much like, Man, you you, you you can't change things like that. Whatever happens, happens. And I think that's when he explained I think that is right there when he explained, um it, it was that episode. because that was around the time when he explained what happened to um when did hold up, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, he there was around the time when he explained what happened to his parents. And uh, of course, what happened on the island and everything that Barry didn't know, and you know, he was definitely big time mentor to Barry, who essentially fell apart. Um, just coming into that, he already was having issues with um, Cisco. You know, with Cisco finding out that of course he changed that, and his brother was live in, in this universe. All right, hold up. Yeah, hold up. <laughs> Did you like Cisco or what? 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 I, 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 I don't. Okay, this has been a huge complaint because like, usually I check Twitter and stuff and, uh-huh. you know, what people thought about the show and stuff. The biggest complaint I could see for most of it was, like, get Cisco off the screen, <laughs> you know? Like, he- Cisco is just killing uh, killing Flash right now over the last couple of episodes. But um, I think, it's gonna I, I bad, think that it's – I think it's just been kind of lame, but I think they did a good job to sort of resolve the conflict between the two guys, you know? I could – kind of understand why he's pissed like but i think they've just taken it overboard like he, they he, felicity it. he was super whiny like there was like uh he, he was real he was kind of petty with it like um during that flash episode it was like uh who do you want like who's gonna be the leader it's like uh he looked at barry and said i pick oliver like what's the point of that <laughs> you're trying to save the world like let that petty crap go at the same time, though, I, I felt like all of these shows did a good job of having the crossover, but also advancing their stories That's at the same they time. They did a great job of it. They did a great job. Um, and one scene I want to talk about in the in the Flash one at the end, like the action part, because we, it took a while to get into the action. But yeah, the part yeah. where like Flash and Supergirl, like he's like Supergirl want to race, and then they race. So she's she's mind controlled at this point. Adjust. I felt like they did a good job of actually making Flash use his smarts, you know, instead of his speed all the time. Exactly. And you saw that you seen that in pre, like early Flash stuff where he actually they actually come up with plans to beat some of the you know, uh, what you call not so much really now with this season something that I've noticed, but you definitely saw it with Supergirl. He punches her. What is that going to do? So he, he has to use his speed to. And he found out that there was a crystal that pretty much mind control was that was uh, mind controlling everyone. So he was gonna get her destroyed since he couldn't. And the best way to do that is he get her chased. And it kind of drew, uh, if you remember, um, a really old comic uh, where Flash races Superman. You know, that, that, yeah, that was kind of yeah. like a little Easter egg to that, which you know obviously it's something really easy to spot out, but. And that that scene was really good. The whole, the whole fight scene. Um, we also saw Wally get into the action, and uh, them setting up more things with him going into you know ahead with the you know, with the Flash series. So, you know, it, they set up. They really didn't mention anything with Alchemy or Savitar. Obviously, they wanted to get into that with the season finale to focus really on that. But mm-hmm. I thought they resolved a lot of stuff. Mainly, the, the big thing they resolved is. Uh, the message from um, Future Barry and everything that was going on with Cisco, get that up out of here. Then they pretty much did that. They they got all that out of there. Um, okay. After uh, the mind control is broken, you know, with the common, with the help of uh, Wally, who helped a little bit, uh, Barry and Oliver, they you know they they break the mind control, and after that. Pretty much the non-superpowered characters get abducted. Sarah, that's um, basically all the Arrow ones. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, <laughs> they weren't gonna abduct someone like Barry or Supergirl because, yeah, they they're gonna uh, wreck the ship that they get um, taken to. But uh, they abduct them at the end of the episode, 
and goes into the next episode, which leads us into the Arrow episode that comes on Wednesday, and sort of like a virtual Matrix world where everyone has their, you know, pretty, pretty much if all the bad crap that did that happened to them in, a lot, in their life didn't happen. You know, uh, Oliver didn't. He this didn't was fantastic. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, he didn't go to the island and everything. And it, it was the alien's way of trying to learn uh, more about them. It was trying to, to get them to, I guess, it was trying to, alien was trying to break them. Um, put them into this world where their parents are alive. Oliver is about to get married. Everybody's life is going good. Um, Diggle's actually the arrow in the universe. And Felicity is still fucking Felicity that we all fucking know it. Don't yeah. like it anymore. <laughs> so it was like basically like yeah, um, Oliver gets everything he wanted, sort of thing. Yeah, and then everyone else around him sort of had a different life. Yeah, you know, um, and as they as the characters start to come together, you know, meet each other, you can see that the whole world was starting to break down as the memories started to come back of actually their real life and everything that really happened. And you're like, you know, kind of like similar with, with, with the scene where Ray Palmer was like. Well, I know you. We were talking to Sarah because he remember everything that happened in, you know, of course, Legend of Tomorrow and everything they went through. And you, you saw that. You saw Oliver knew exactly what the hideout and everything was that new passcodes and everything, new Diggle. And, you know, you could see the world start to break down. And I, I thought, I, I really did like this. Uh, I really did like this episode. And it kind of, you could see characters like Thea who really didn't want to leave this world who you know she had everything I want parents are still alive brothers happy um you know they had their old life old house um bunch of you know every, everything they wanted you know their life doesn't essentially just as she would probably explain it suck same thing, but it, it, it wasn't real um you know same with Sarah she sees her sister alive her father's happy and everything like that but mm-hmm I, I, I really liked, def, I really definitely liked this episode because it was more of like an emotional episode where it, it shows, um, I guess, how the how much the characters grown throughout the different you know different seasons. It was all the Arrow characters. <laughs> it was all the Arrow characters. Pretty well, the reason episode. why is because it was Arrow episode 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind so of like it was the hundredth episode. So they're trying to celebrate Arrow and kind of bring it back to its roots a little bit so they had the whole flashback thing yeah, not flashback probably. like virtual reality thing and then mm-hmm. you know his mom and dad were still alive that was cool to see like the old actors actresses in the show mm-hmm. um i thought this is where Stephen amell really like he really shined in this episode yep. um also it just goes to show how much this show c- could have been better and like in the future, hopefully gets better if Laurel comes back, because I, I felt like they should have never really went away from you know those two instead of Felicity because I I don't know it's just like the chemistry thing and I, I don't know she just makes the show a lot better in my opinion. I, I don't um, think I mean looking at looking back at it, I just don't think they should have you know killed off Laurel. I mean, well, I, they I, never should. Yeah, they never should have done that either. They, they're but. trying to do it to. Try to create that wow uh, mix up everything. You know, it just didn't work, and it just didn't make sense either. No, and now if they backtrack on it, it's gonna look really bad. Uh, you know, yeah. Unless they find a way to involve. Constantly. I think she is coming back though sparingly to the show. Yeah, could be like different universe. You you've seen the uh, the actor who you know she comes back in different episodes, but I, I just think they they did a really poor job with her death and everything that went on with that. She shouldn't have just, she shouldn't have got killed off. Um, maybe there was, was a, maybe it was something with was, the actor or something. She they could do every, she could be in every single episode. She could be in every episode every now and then. Maybe we could miss Yeah, I don't like know that. how busy she is, but she's like in other shows or yeah. TV or like movies or something now. So I don't know. So maybe, um, maybe that was the reason. You know, if that's the reason, that's, then that's fine. You couldn't really do nothing about that. You had to find a way to get, kind of get rid of the character. Yeah. Um, actually, I like this episode. I really like the whole. Uh, it, it was kind of. It was a more so emotional episode than being huge action. Us versus you know us and the team up versus them, uh, the aliens and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think like each sort of episode had a, like a theme. Like the first one was sort of like fun. The second one was like 
drama filled. The third one was like action. Yeah, with Legends the, of Tomorrow just, has a lot of that. Legends yeah, of and, and I, that. again, like back to Arrow is just like some of the scenes with uh, Oliver, Thea. Those like those were good scenes. Um, him and even um, uh, Captain Lance. Like, when he's like, oh, yeah, I'm proud of the man that you've become. Like, that's kind of, like, a good moment if you've watched the show from the very beginning. Because, mm-hmm. of course, he's hated him. Ever since like, the beginning, through, he's always hated him. Yeah, so that that was kind of a good moment. Um, There's just some different good moments in this episode. I This was personally my favorite episode of the three. It, it definitely was um, the strongest in terms of just uh, showing develop, how the characters have developed throughout the ser- series and the acting. I think it was... Definitely, um, going less action. You had action in the episode near, the, you know, of course near the end, where they fight. I guess some of the greatest enemies, you know, um, uh, Oliver who fights Deathstroke. Deathstroke's fucking awesome. Um, you know, Sarah. Too bad they couldn't get the actor though. Yeah, because he never talked. Um, Sarah fights uh, Damian Dark and uh, Ray and Diggle fight nobodies. Well, Ray fought the um, <laughs> the soldier that killed his his oh, wife. You right, you right, you right, you right. You did, you did. But I don't know who Diggle fought. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, I don't know. But um, you, you saw. I, I think it should have been his brother. Yeah, they should have tried. They should have put his brother up there, and then when he he might have been reluctant to fight, but it was been adding more to the you know that emotion um, of that. For that particular episode, they they also made a reference. I don't know if you caught this, but the 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 guy that used to play Tommy, um, is like in a show like Chicago, like he's a doctor on like Chicago something, mm-hmm. and like they made a reference. Uh, Malcolm Merlin and Thea were talking, and they're like, "Oh yeah, he's like a doctor in Chicago or something." Oh wow! See, I, I see. I didn't know he was in um uh, that show that you're talking about, but I did remember. I didn't even hear it. I thought I just kind of glanced over. See, they they love they like do a little Easter eggs every now and then, and it's yeah. It's, I I didn't know that, but um definitely definitely I would I would probably I have to agree with you. Definitely strong a very strong episode. Um and pretty much how that ends. Uh of course they find out everything's not real. They get out of the virtual world. They, this random portal just said walk through. What the aliens were fucking doing, I don't know, but you know they leave, uh, find out they're on a spaceship in space. Uh, they still want the alien ship. You know, after they get into you know the fights with you know, with the aliens, they still the alien. Ship this part the was aliens. a little strange because they had them like arrow, which like t- typically doesn't happen in space. They had an arrow fight in space, and then they took off like in a in like a jet or pod that they couldn't fly and somehow still made it alive like it was pretty unrealistic but it was still fun at the same yeah, time like they didn't even they didn't know how to fly the thing at all um they eventually get saved by um i'm calling him citizen steel that's what he's called in the comic this is a corny name but they, they get saved by him they get saved by vixen who ha- at this point hasn't been really shown up until right in and of course the legends tomorrow episode but you know that's what they get saved by and you know they, they get brought back and that's pretty much how the episode ends strong episode now the finale of it uh the pretty much the legends of tomorrow episode that ended all of it um you want to talk about you know, what you think about that particular episode uh legends yeah, the um legends. it was good i think it, like i said it was Second best, probably. Um, it had the best action, Definitely. obviously. Uh, there was a couple scenes there, like on the rooftop. Just like the teamwork and the choreography was like really cool to watch. Um, you could definitely tell they put their money into like. You saw it when, when the spaceship, the CG was yeah. really good. So you know they put some money into the episode. Yeah, the fight scenes were really cool. Um, but. Yeah, it was pretty much just one giant, like, battle. You know, like, it it was basically, like, a battle. Like, there wasn't... All the character stuff kind of happened, like, in the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of had all the action, which was... It was a lot of fun. Like, this was the funnest episode. So if you just want to, like, you know, watch Supergirls... Or super superheroes kick ass, then, you know, watch this episode if you haven't already, but... 
Yeah, that, um, that's pretty much pretty cool. what you got in the episode. Um, only really, I guess, character and um, I guess story things was uh, Cisco finally getting over, you know, because he found out because what that happened was um, a video. A video was shown in the Flash episode of them first meeting the Dominators X amount of years ago. Um, well, it was U.S. soldiers fighting the Dominators. They actually go back in time to kidnap a Dominator to, I guess, learn about the reason that they're there. Um, and that completely mm-hmm. is one of the reasons that they were ended up there, that, from what I'm guessing. And they, you find out they had a deep hatred for, like, metahumans. And they mm-hmm. were threatening to kill all metahumans. Unless Barry Allen sacrifices himself. And you said that you didn't really know why, which I still don't really know why. So if anyone could answer that question. But I think why is because, like I, like I said to you, is, you know, he was the first metahuman in the universe. Mm-hmm. Like Flash kind of brought about all the other metahumans out of Central City to, like, they, then after Flash was created, then everybody else sort of came out. So maybe that is why. But then also, like you said, that big kind of character moment with Cisco and Barry. You know, now Cisco has no reason to complain. If he continues to complain... He better not. At this point, like, they are, they've already made up. Uh, he learned about how easy it is to screw up the timeline. You know about... He learned the crap that Barry had to go through. It, it, there shouldn't be no issues with that. It should be moved past that, and it should be focused on everything that's going on with Savitar. That's what that's what Flash should be going on about now. Jim, I don't want to hear anything about Cisco being mad about his brother when that's been squashed. Definitely, I'm sick of, I was kind of sick of hearing because he was definitely whining throughout the episode, and then Felicity at least two or three times asked him, and she asked him on this episode. It, you, yeah, it, it got <laughs> annoying. But um, I think one of the highlight uh like moments of this episode is actually not fight scenes were great. Fight scenes were great. We know that. Were great. Yeah. Um, was, I guess the interactions with, because the only tension you really had was between Supergirl, and there's also another one that I. Wanted to mention as well, but between Supergirl and Oliver, where Oliver, he, his, he trusted pretty much everyone else but her, and you kind of saw that what he wanted. You know, he, he said he was like he doesn't like unknowns and uh, stuff like that. And, yeah, and she had her his back in the fight and everything. Yeah, she's and it, it shows her character where someone who said all you could say doesn't like you, she still helps him. And it definitely shows her character. Uh, she was still able, willing to help him. It's just something she does. Um, so, the so, Supergirl was probably the character that you didn't see much of because she's not part of the universe. She's not part of whatever's going on in this in this universe. So yeah, she's at least she's probably she's pretty much detached from everything that's going on this with a uh, Flashpoint, Savitar, or you know anything going on with the Legends or Arrow. She's detached from that. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, one thing we did forget to mention for, with the Arrow episode was uh, talking with a guy that doesn't like people with powers. I thought that was um pretty solid uh, interaction. Um. But that that wasn't it wasn't I don't I don't think it was enough to mention. But um another moment was when Barry chose to sacrifice himself. Kind of showed his character and just how he he was. He was still he's still blaming himself for Flashpoint. I don't think that's really gonna change despite all the things that Oliver has said to him. He still blames himself for everything that happened with Flashpoint. Um and he was pretty much going kamikaze and right into their hands. It's, you know, they wanted yeah. Barry. If he surrendered himself, they wouldn't set off the meta bomb, which pretty much would have killed every meta in the city. And with the collateral damage, kill a lot of uh, normal people. So that's essentially what they were trying to stop in this episode, and you know, they, then it pretty much gets around to the action. It's really the only story stuff that you can really talk about outside of uh, uh, what you call his daughter. That he, in, it was something that he ended up doing in the past. Um, but you know, that, that I like was, how they kind of made that. Um, 
attachment of having like the guy in the modern day be in the fifties. You know, the old guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, but the one of my favorite parts about this was just the ending. Where Oliver and Barry kind of get together, uh, they have like a party thing, and then they go to like the bar and they're drinking and stuff. That was pretty awesome. And they're like, "Oh, who would win in round three? Like that was just a pretty cool moment to finish off the entire thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because that was around the time when they showed uh, because kind of like then it was Super Supergirl, Oliver and Barry kind of broke off and they were talking, and that's when that's when you kind of saw they. Reconcile their, um, I guess, uh, tension between you know, er- between Oliver and uh, Kara, and yeah, th- those was those were some pretty good moments. Um, like I said, most of this episode was they-, they were gonna get all their action out of the way. You knew you were gonna get a big battle at the end. You got that. Um, you got you know, Supergirl, Barry Allen flying, around, you know, uh, flying, running around the city, putting tags and everything on them. Um, mm. But. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about um so much. Uh his daughter. Yeah, yeah. I that was I was uh, actually going to um, mention that it was something like he did in the past um on one of the legends episode. But uh they actually you know, they went into even that. So they were able to mix in different side stories. And this is this uh, that particular thing expanded between Arrow and of course it's um Legend of Tomorrow, where he was like, "No, you know, he told Jefferson, no, I don't want to erase her from the timeline because at this point she's considered an aberration, you know, as they call in the legends." Yeah. He no, he doesn't want to fix it, but before he really wanted to fix it, but now he finds out, you know, she's really smart. She helped them pretty much beat the Dominator, so yeah. she was really important in you know in this crossover. The thing is, though, do you think that his wife is dead? I don't know, but I have that no, feeling because we never saw her in the episode. She 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 said she was gone. She didn't she didn't seem sad about it. Because when he asked about it, she he said she just she said she wasn't there. She's like, oh yeah, you know she's gone. Yeah, that, I was like, but she seemed too happy about it for her to be dead, unless it was bad acting or something. Yeah, she, maybe maybe they maybe they got divorced. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Interesting though, something to look forward to. Yeah, we'll see what uh, we'll see when everybody else finds out about it with Legends. Hopefully, they don't sulk like Cisco. But um, <laughs> other than that, I like the whole crossover. Uh, that's that's three three episodes, of five minutes. But I, I like the whole crossover. I would say, um, I guess we'll be ranking them. I would say the Arrow one, Arrow one was the strongest just because. Acting, emotional um, impact. You saw some of the old actors from early on in Arrow. Um, you know the d- interactions with different characters, the growth of uh, some of the main characters you saw throughout the series, and how everybody's grown. Um, then I would say it would be Legends. Action was probably the biggest thing with me in terms of uh, the reason I'm picking that as my second one. And then uh, Flash. Flash one was still good, but it, it was obviously going to the uh, it had to, the pace it had to go at because you're trying to fit in these characters meeting each other introducing the dominators and what they are there for and trying yeah. to uh, set up the rest of the episode so it was, it was all set up it was, it was trying to do a lot in that episode so I, I can understand why um, the episode kind of had some issues but I, I, I still really like the episode because what they did with this entire crossover you know, we talk about having different characters in movies, you know, such as with the Avengers and the upcoming Justice League. This is really difficult to do in even shorter time with a TV show. You you got yeah. you having characters with more characters with more characters exactly. You know, the Legends characters was what? How many Legends characters in? Do you using Legends? Legends is basically the Avengers, and then you got like extra characters on Arrow, Flash, like. All the sideline characters, and because the total total runtime between all of them would be like uh, over an hour and a half. And if you watch the Civil War, that movie's two and a half hours long. Now, I'm not really, yeah. I'm not comparing that stuff to you know, obviously the quality of something like Civil War, but it's really difficult to do that 
in a TV show setting where you have a lower budget and this was time. really good for a TV. Yes, it's really good for a TV show. But um, I I, I definitely really liked it. Can't wait to see what they do next time because you know, Supergirl definitely gonna be more of a part of it because now she can come to their universe at any time. And can I bring up one name? What's that? Superman. Yes. Yeah, so when will Superman be a uh, part of that? Because she brought him up like two, three times. She did. She brought him up. Um, so will he be? How will he affect the? Uh, will, we, will he be able to? You know, being one of the crossovers next time. Yeah. The, yeah, but I'm, I liked it. What did you think? Oh, I thought it was awesome. Um, lots of fun. Uh, I thought that the... I was most looking forward to the Arrow episode, and it definitely delivered the most. It was my favorite. Um, because it was the 100th episode, I was kind of looking forward to see what they would do in, in terms of that. Then we had the Legends episode, like you said, the best action. Um, they put the most time and probably money into that one. Uh, the Flash was was a good episode for just building up everybody, seeing the relationships and how it how it would kind of work. So I thought all three episodes were enjoyable, um, but that's how I would order them. Uh, like I said, I think the MVP is Stephen Amell as the actor, yeah, um, but I thought every he definitely did had he definitely did the best acting job throughout the entire crossover. No argument there. Like I said, he was a, he he was pretty much Yoda to Barry because Barry was completely sulking. Throughout majority of it, because yep. how much? Because essentially, he blamed himself for them being there, which we still don't know why they wanted Meta there exactly. <laughs> we can guess, but he blamed himself mainly because they wanted him. So he's like, okay, if they want me, then it's probably my fault that I, you know whatever I did. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I thought he was the MVP, and but I thought everybody was good. Um, they did a good job of also not only just doing this crossover, but building the stories forward, which is very hard to do. Um, so I, I think they did a great job overall. Um, for the shows itself, are we going to talk about the shows itself uh, or what? Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Um, I don't know. I don't know which one has been the best. Like I've been struggling. It seems like every week one show tops the other. Like, one week, Legends will have the best, or, you know, Arrow, Flash. Flash has had a couple, like, really good episodes, but then again, they've had a couple, like, filler yeah. or bad episodes. Yes, yeah, it, start, it started out, I would say Flash started out, uh, showing, when they did the Flashpoint, that was good, but I don't, like I said, I don't think it lasted long enough. But... Yeah, and then I think their best episode was actually the one where they did uh, Killer Frost. Yeah, that was, that was a good, that was a really good episode. Arrow has been kind of the most consistent, I think, but none of the episodes have been like amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Legends, I think, has kind of been really. It was really good at the beginning, but it's it's kind of what you're gonna get with this show. I think Legends, they're just it's it's the funnest show. It, it's not really. I don't think it's the best show in terms of like storylines or anything. But like it, it definitely has the most action, kind of like the coolest what yeah, if you got stories. You got different time time periods that they go to. So it's yeah, it, it's it's always fun to watch, and and it's always a good watch. Like sometimes you'll get like a bad Arrow episode, especially last season. Uh, Flash, like sometimes you'll have a couple characters in Flash that just turn you off from the episode, Cisco. Um, but <laughs> you know, I I think that they've all kind of share uh, shared the spotlight this this season so yeah um I, I think and um the legend of tomorrow probably the show that had the, has had the most changes in terms of characters um, yeah no rip uh hulk man um hulk girl i think it's it, do you think gone. it's been a pro or con that rip is not there because i think he was he was really strong uh, i want to say it's necessary back because sarah's character has gotten better since then that's true you know, because she's currently now the leader, so yeah, her character's gotten better. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I, I I know a lot of people for some reason didn't like him. I don't understand why. I I, I like though. I had a problem with them. It was mainly Hawkman, Hawk Hawk Woman. They were terrible. <laughs> that that's why they're gone. They were they were terrible. Just because that's when they when they were gone. The second half of Legends last year was like really good. Yeah, and their whole because they pretty much had to be there throughout the first season because she was the one who had to kill um yeah she was you know she was the one who had to kill she was the only one that could so 
it kind of locked her into being in that season. Now she's gone. I feel as though, although they haven't done it as much with the Vixen, they still got a lot of time to do it. But I don't know. I just like I like the actor more. Um, the guy, uh, Citizen Steel, is what we call him. Um, yeah, I think Legends has done a, the best job of like spreading. Kind of one episode will be really heavy with Sarah. One episode will be really heavy with Ray Jefferson, um, you know, Stein or whatever. So there's like a lot of good, like really good episodes with certain actors in the episode. Like I think that one where they had the whole zombies thing, like I thought Jefferson was like he Firestorm def- in general, was yeah, like he, re- he was really good. In that episode because he, he had to become for a small amount of time. He had to become a leader. He had to show self control that he hasn't shown in the past. You know, and that episode surprised me that they were willing to do that on. Yeah, that was bold show, to do a show like that where you show slaves. You got you know early nineteen hundreds. You showing slaves. I mean, that was eighteen hundreds. I'm sorry. Um, that that was very that was really bold to do an episode like that. Um, and one thing, um, they, they actually, you know, an episode was actually Easter egg for, like, Vixen, who she, that was one of the slaves that knew who she, you know, knew the, um, the Nazi totem, the, the necklace she wears that gives her the power to, uh, yeah manifest the different, um, abilities of different animals, which, uh, that's actually, uh, anime, but here's the thing, the anime, which they never mentioned in the, cro- in the crossovers, is a different person. So who is that? There's only one Anansi totem. <laughs> the, the, obviously, there are two different people, because uh, the chick, the girl from the animated one, which is part of the universe, because she's been in the Arrow show. Her name is Mari uh, Mari McCabe. Oh yeah, that's right. Who is this person? This is one thing I was been questioning ever since I seen. I was like, who is like I was surprised when they showed the JS, JSA. Who is that? Who what? Because there's been other people that have had the totem because it's really old. But I'm trying to figure out what's her correlation between her and the Vixen of you know, the current time. Which they never yeah. really talked about when they did see her. So I think that was one thing they kind of missed. I think something that is missing on the show is kind of Vixen's development as a character. Yeah. I, I, I think like, that they have more time, but... I like the actor more than I liked in comparison to Hawk Woman, which I guess ain't saying much. But uh, yeah. I like one. I like her powers more too. I, I I liked her in the um the episode with Jefferson. You, know, you didn't get a bunch of character development, but you could see what was happening. Like uh, you know, when the slave was getting whipped, she was she was ready to go in there for the kill. Yeah. So yeah, I, they just just need to put out an episode showing with more development for her. We know the reason her motives for being there, but give us mm-hmm. some more development with that character. I think it will come once we get more um, with the reverse be. flash because we don't really they don't really know about him yet, do they? They know there's a speedster, but they don't know who it is. Okay, that they uh so, they as a matter of fact they never that was one thing they they never mentioned something like the, the bear. You kind of thought they would have during the crossover, but they never mentioned that. Cause Barry, yeah, interesting. Because Barry, Barry knows. Barry's the only... He's the only one that knows Eobar is still alive. What Eobar did was save himself. Yeah. He's, he ended up saving himself for that reason. But, uh... I think it's... Uh, we're going to have season finales coming up next week. We'll have to see how that sets up. Um, mid-season finale, I'm sorry. We're going to see how that sets up the rest of uh, each show's season. Um, each show's season. But... I need to start, because I've missed the last few episodes of Arrow, I'm be honest. I need to start going back and watching Arrow just to see, from what I've heard from a lot of people, it's an improvement over the previous season. Which I, I'm yeah, it's a, it's a lot it better. It, it's not it's not spectacular, but it, it's it's better. Um, also, Supergirl, and, I haven't seen the last two episodes, so check that out. I need to check those out as well. Supergirl, what I appreciate about it is it's kind of different than the other shows. Like, I think it it kind of has a different um, message yeah. and stuff. Like, I, I was talking to you off the air. It's like, it kind of brings in a different fan base also, and I just feel like it does a good job of 
I don't know, like there's the story with um, her sister coming out and stuff. I don't know if you saw that yet. So, mm-hmm. and, well, actually, I, I remember reading a review about that. Spoiler alert! Wow. Yeah. Um, the, the introduction of Superman really helped out this sh- that show. Um, oh, for a lot sure. Of pe- a lot of people was really disappointed about who the guy was playing Superman, but I thought he did a good job. He did pretty good. He doesn't look like Superman not, to me. He's, but... he's not Henry Cavill big. Yeah, he's a good actor, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I, he's in a couple movies I think I've seen, but he's he's not, like, he doesn't just look, he doesn't look the part to me. He doesn't. Even though, like, I, I don't know, he's a good-looking guy or whatever, but, like, I don't think he looks like Superman in, in the, uh, I don't know, ge- general way, but, like, Henry Cavill looks like Superman yeah. to me. You can tell um, he, but, he, he, you can tell he worked out a lot. This guy doesn't see like necessarily worked out a lot. And he's he's shorter in stature. Um, yeah, Henry Cavill's about six two, six three, or something like that. This guy's definitely shorter than that. Um, but I, like I said, I thought he did, did a good job. He's definitely a different Superman than what we've seen in the movies. Where that Superman, pretty dark, serious. You don't see. Yeah, he's he's more like um, the original Superman. Yeah. He's more, um, he's happy. You see his moments when he's serious, but most of the time he's really happy, which that's probably the Superman we've seen more of than the Henry Cavill Superman, to be honest. Even in the animated shows, you see. I think that's mostly because of the director. Yeah. We've, I think enough people have talked about that guy. Who, <laughs> yeah. I like Man of Steel, but. Um, I do. I think. I do think. I do think that Man of Steel gets way too much slack. I think that movie is actually pretty good. I, 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 out of the uh, three movies, I still think that's, that's, my, that's my best one. Because yeah, the, I can't believe we talk about the movies now. But uh, Zod is still the best villain. Ooh. I think Zod is the best villain, maybe even of like most of the Marvel movies. Pretty much. Not to make the comparison. I, Loki was damn good though. Yeah, Loki was like the only one though. I That's know. something that I've hated about Marvel is that the their villains, villains are just so sad. Yeah, villains have not been good. Yeah, I mean, um, but we'll see how DC does. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for a couple of the movies. Yeah, I just you, you got Wonder Woman. You got um, Justice League coming out this year. Aquaman got a release date, which I don't remember what that was. Yeah. But um. Anyways, uh, crossover was really good. Um, actually, you go on the CW site; they actually got, uh, I believe, it got to where it plays the whole thing, um, where you can watch it right up there on the CW website. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Come back to this review. Let us know what you think. Um, go ahead, and give you give them your uh, YouTube, Twitter, and everything else you want to give them. All right, uh, my YouTube is the Bottom Line View. I talk about uh, sports, mostly football, a lot of football on there, wrestling as well. Um, you know, I the odd time I might do a movie review or whatever, but mostly sports, wrestling, and then uh, my Twitter is at Mitch Milani. Okay. M I L A N I. And if you haven't already liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. Go watch those episodes. Really good. Um, you already know my Twitter. Calvin Philpot. Course with two T's. We're out.